Welcome back to your continuing live coverage on Be Terrific, BeTerrific.com of CES 2015, the Consumer Electronics Show. I'm Michael Artsis coming to you live from the Las Vegas Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you so much for joining us, for watching. I know you're enjoying this at home, so join the chat. We have an IRC chat right under the video player uh, that's embedded on BeTerrific.com slash live. It's also on Planet5D.com where you're also watching live, ExtremeKids.com. Please join the chat, ask us questions that you want us to ask on air, let us know what you're thinking, and uh, let us know, give us feedback. All right, um, I've got to tell you about this amazing product right here. It is the Sun Socket Energy Bar 250. It is unbelievable. This thing has 250 watt hours of power stored in it, and it's so easy to use. You just flip the on switch, and then you've got USB ports, you've got a uh, cigarette lighter adapter, and you've got a regular outlet, and it can charge through a regular outlet in the wall, or it can charge through one of these amazing solar panels. Now they have bigger ones and smaller ones, and Aspect Solar has the most amazing battery packs. They start at the small ones for the cell phone and go all the way up to rack mounted ones, big enough to run this entire setup off of them. And they can all be powered either off of the wall or better off of these amazing solar panels that they have. They're scratch resistant, they're easy to transport, and they do 22% more light. This stuff is just the best. It's the way to get it done, and it is the way to really make sure that you never, ever, ever run out of power. Think emergencies, think camping, think hiking, think all sorts of stuff, think broadcasting. You need to get Aspect Solar. Go to AspectSolar.com. My next guest is Colin Gwynn. He's a good friend. And uh, 3D Robotics. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks um, for having me on. Thank you Michael, for being on. It. First of all, it's so good to see you. I know, it's great to see you as well. And, and yeah. it's, it's, it's good to have the you know, best looking guy at CES here oh in the chair. Oh my God, come on. I'm, I'm looking at the best looking <laughs> guy at CES right here. Come on, I just man. like, you came in, you saw the hashtag cube, and you were like, who's that Dude, handsome guy flying a drone? Who is that hunk and I looked flying at it, a drone like, on there? I thought it was going to be you or something. No it, it way, was me. man, that was, no thank way. You. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is super killer, by the way. I got to give them props. I will buy one of those. That it, is. It is pretty awesome, isn't it? That is really awesome. Awesome. That is yeah. the hashtag cube, and people can, what we're telling people to do is take pictures of their favorite gadget, of them with their favorite gadget, or them using their favorite gadget, or just their favorite gadget. Yep. Go to Instagram, upload the picture to Instagram, put in the hashtag be terrific TV stage. So we'll if I so if I just if I Instagram one of my photos yes. and I and I hashtag be terrific TV stage, TV stage. It will show up right here, and then we'll pick a winner later in the week who will win this. Now, what if I send some vulgar pictures from the do club? That. It's just going to pop up on there? Well, it will. But I'd, I prefer. I won't do that. Yeah, Obviously, don't I do won't. That. And, and you guys don't do don't that either. Do that. You guys don't do that either, okay? <laughs> 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 Sorry, I just threw it out there. I can't, my mind just went there. Sorry. Yeah, that's um, all right. Hashtag be terrific TV stage. You got it. Okay. And so cool. maybe we could have an iris picture, either of the iris flying 100%. or from the iris. 100%. And then you could win, maybe. I don't know. You never know. The winner is going to be the best picture. The, okay. the thing that either makes us laugh or makes us smile or we think is just, this is a great picture. Okay. I, um, yeah. I, we'll, we'll, we'll upload some cool pics. All right. Awesome. Sure. So the yeah. Iris and the Iris Plus are out. Iris Plus is, is killing it. We're actually, it's doing really well. People are really loving it. Yeah. Well, I'm loving it. I saw it at Engadget X-Band. <coughs> when are we getting ours to review? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw it at Engadget X-Band, and I was just blown away by it. Uh, first of all, uh, walk me through all the things it does. It flies itself. I mean, you could literally have zero experience flying a drone and be able to fly this. That's right. That's right. What's One of the things that's fun about it is um, you can actually just have your tablet, set it on the ground wherever you are. Say you're on the beach in Hawaii or you're at some cool location, you're at your house, whatever, and literally just hit, there's a selfie mode where you just hit a button, and whatever direction it's pointed on the ground, then you just hit start, it takes off, it flies up and away from you, keeping the camera focused right on you, and then it flies right back in, down in at you, and then stops right before it gets back to you and lands itself. Wow. It's like a one minute thing, and you just like, boom, take it out, set it on the ground, selfie, go. So you, you, you know? know what I think about all these different things that you can do with the Iris, is that it's really the safest drone out there because it's got all the safety features and then it adds all these features that prevent people from actually screwing up themselves. And, yeah. and, and, and user error can be a big issue. 
That's right. I mean, you know, one of the big pain points for new pilots is kind of just figuring out the whole control scheme and how to like your orientation when you rotate the copter around, now the controls are reversed. I think that's the hardest move. That's right, that's right, <laughs> or flying sideways, you know, and now, like if you're, if I'm standing here and I want to do a dolly shot going that way, looking at that wall, sure. that's a tough shot, Very man. Very tough shot. Because you're pulling to the right, you know, and, and you're having to correct, you're correcting your left and right with the forward and back, that's just confusing, you right. know, and so what we're trying to do is use software to, to try to really decouple that having to like become an expert and just say, draw a line on the tablet, say, look right there the whole time, go. And now it does that same dolly shot and it actually rotates about where you want it to look. That's you unbelievable. Know? And so that's like, that would take a long time to learn how to do as a pilot. It took me a long time to learn how to do a shot like that. And we can nail it perfectly every time because it's just being done by a computer. How's you know? your boy Adam? This guy's flying over the Hudson River like low shots coming up across the city. He's crazy. We had a <laughs> lot of fun. I love that guy. <laughs> He's just having a blast. Did you teach him how to fly because you're the best pilot I've ever seen and he is remarkable. No. Uh, I mean we flew together a lot yeah. and, and you know I met Adam and started working with Adam um, you know, before I ever uh, partnered up with DJI and opened DJI North America, back when I was just shooting aerial cinematography, uh, he had a, a really cool little uh, production company called Sneaky Giants. And um, we, we teamed up on a lot of stuff. And so, um, yeah, we started shooting aerials together. And, and then once the Phantom came out, it was small and easy to learn on. So he started learning how to fly. And now he's just killing it. He's just, he's like an aerial cinematographer. 100%. That's awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay, so, um, now you can also, what's cool with the Iris Plus is you can also wear like a watch or something where you can go, you go paddle boarding for instance, That's right. and it follows you, That's right. and then it flies home, and when you're done paddle boarding, you've got all this great footage. Yeah, so cool little anecdote on that. So follow me, for me, you're right, I, I do a lot of stand-up paddling, and uh, I can put my Android device that's connected to our little data radio in like a little waterproof case or something like that, Velcroed onto my board, and then I can control the drone from my watch completely. So once it's up in the air, I get in the water, I say follow, right? And then I can even change from my Pebble smartwatch, follow right, follow left, <laughs> go in front of me, go from above looking down, even orbit. So as I'm paddling along, it's orbiting around me, looking at me the whole time. And then when I'm like, okay, cool, I got some great shots, I can just hit RTL, which is return to launch. It goes back home, lands itself back in my yard, and then I can keep paddling for 15, 20 minutes, whatever, come back and it's just sitting there in my yard waiting for me. Wow. It's and pretty neat. That, that is, that is. And I think it's a great, again, it's a great safety feature because you can really direct where you want this to go and have it fly much more autonomously so you're not worried about hitting buildings, hitting trees. That's right. Doing well, things like that. well and, and, and now of course with that, you know, just to, you know, to, you know, for full disclosure, I mean, obviously it doesn't have object avoidance. Right. So you want to make sure if you're going into a follow me mode. You don't that, go into a forest. Yeah, you're not going to want it to follow you into a forest. <laughs> exactly. You want to be in a pretty open area. But as long as you're in an open area. So are, are it, things like great. object avoidance coming in the future? Oh, man, of course. You know, we're working on it. DJI's working on it. Sensefly's working on it. You know, ev everyone in this industry is working on follow me, or not follow me, sorry, object avoidance. Um, but the key is getting it lightweight, getting right. that technology light enough and being able to see far enough ahead to stop yourself if it's going 20 or 30 miles right. an hour. That's the key. Anyone can throw some sonar sensors on a drone and say, look, watch how it doesn't hit this wall right here. You know what I mean? But that's not real world. Real world is I'm outside, I'm flying this thing 20 miles an hour, and, and it, it ends up going near a tree, and I don't want it to hit the tree, right? right? And I, I, need it to, I need it to see the tree, I need it to know that that tree is really there, <laughs> and then I, you know, not just some like random, it thinks something is there and it blows my shot because it hits the brakes when there was nothing there anyways. So you don't want false positives. Right. And then you need enough time to bring it to a stop or to either travel around it. And that's just a difficult problem to solve. And basically that just takes a lot of grams. Right. Right. It takes a lot of grams on the copter. A lot We're of still weight. talking about drones now, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You went, you took it there. He took it there, all right? I'm just um, having fun. Yeah, so, no, it does. It takes a lot of weight on the copter to, to have that kind of intelligence and those optics necessary right. to do really good object avoidance. So absolutely, it's coming. The Intel Edison chip it is huge. It does a super high level of processing. We, we're messing around with that a little bit, working with Intel on the Edison chip, doing uh, machine vision, so we can do visual follow me. 
so you don't have to wear a watch. You don't have to have your Android wow. device. It literally just hones in on you and follows you around. That's amazing. Yeah, really cool. So it's all coming. It's all coming. You guys, you guys. See, so I mean, I think that realistically, DJI has a, a huge presence, and and a lot oh, of people yeah. know about them. Um, but you guys seem to be the much more innovative company. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's hard not to be when you have like a hundred, you know, scientists around the world <laughs> that like their their passion is working on the flight code, which is our open source flight code, right? So like. We can't take 100% of the credit for all these really neat features that I'm talking about. So much of that comes from our community, from DIYdrones.com community of people that are that are contributing to this open source APM copter. So, what, what do you think you of these know, little drones that are like? Hand I think they're awesome, man. Have you seen the Micro Drone 2.0? Yeah, that's probably my favorite one. I love those guys. We I have love one. that drone, he, the he, Micro Drone yeah, 2.0. He gave us one in Engadget X. Yeah, yeah, awesome, right? Unbelievable. Have you flown it? I mean, yes. it's it's, it's hard. twitchy. It's hard to fly. It, I like it because oh, I'm sure you're great it's at it. so maneuverable. We have like four of them at the office, and we're just ripping them around the office. I'll tell you another. He's drone amazing. He was doing flips with it. Oh on yeah, set. yeah, yeah, yeah. We set. do. It's like well, it goes into a flip mode. Yeah. And you just push it, and it goes whoop, and does a little flip. I, I I have trouble flying. Period. It's it, fun though. It's managing so fun. the altitude. That's what on the that thing is. is very difficult. That's the problem. Because obviously you go into forward flight and it's going to lose altitude. Right. There's no barometer, so it's not doing out al you know altitude hold for you. Right. Um, but if you want to learn how to become a better pilot, you fly that Micro Drone 2.0 around and you'll become a very good pilot. Um, another one that's really great I just got is the Parrot uh, Rolling Spider. I like that thing. Have you flown it yet? I haven't, but I love the way it looks. I got one for my kids for Christmas mm -hmm. and uh, and they love it. My three-year-old flies it around, no wow. joke. With his little, He just turned three December 21st. Awesome. So he's basically barely three and he's flying with his iPad mini, takes off, flies around inside the house, Bumps into things a little bit, but, but it's, it's okay. got those little yeah. round things on it. Hits land, it comes out and lands itself. That's a really great little beginner, fun toy to fly around inside. I got to get yeah. my boy Jack on that one. You he's, have to. He's, only, he's about to. to be 19 months in, in a couple days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and so we got to yeah. get him on he's that He's already one. playing with the iPad, I'm sure. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> the it's iPad, great. the phone. Oh, we yeah. FaceTime, he hangs up on me. You can. <laughs> I think there's even a mode with the, uh, with the uh, little spider thing the parrot rolling spider or whatever yeah. it'll pop up and you actually can't go forward back left right you just go up rotate and That's down pretty cool. you know what i mean so, so is that get the best starter drone especially for younger kids you know i'll tell you what after having played with that one the mcqx by blade is great but still takes a little bit of skill to fly it's a little bit easier than micro drone 2.0 but um i gotta say man that rolling spider at what's like 129 bucks like or that, 99 dollars, yeah. something like that. I, I'd say that'd probably be my recommendation for somebody who wanted to learn to fly. Now the only problem with it is you don't actually have a controller. Right. You're trying to do it with the iPad, and obviously that control scheme is not super intuitive. Um, but as like a first toy to just get something in the air and be able to fly around indoors, I love it, man. I think it's a great product. Awesome. Andre did a great job with that thing. Awesome. I, I think yeah. that they, yeah, they they do great stuff. Um, what about uh, you guys? What what do you see as the future? I mean, you guys can do all sorts of different ways to control it: uh, iPads, uh, watches, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the real controller. Yeah. Um, what do you What do you think is the future? You know, I'd love it someday in the future where I can just look, and I mean, think about how easily I could go and fly between those lights and then fly through that. If all I had to do is think about where I wanted to go, right? The only hard you part know about this flying sounds a drone, bananas, right? I know it sounds bananas, right? But here's the deal. And I know that I'm just but saying But eye-tracking like, software could make well, this work. Well, I don't know. All I'm saying is that conceptually, conceptually, the drone is not difficult to fly because it has a hard time going somewhere, right? The drone, like if you look at like the guys in Pennsylvania, um, you know, KML, mm -hmm. right? They're doing these amazing things with these motion tracking. You've seen like the, the drones that pass the stick back sure. and forth, that flip through the windows. The drone has the capability to be extremely maneuverable and to fly through the tightest of spaces, right? And obviously, visually, I could look here and I could imagine it flying through there. And if it just did that for me, so I don't know if that's like a pointer where you're just like directing it around or if it's eye tracking with a heads up display and augmented reality what about view. like a joystick, like a real helicopter pilot or a fighter right. pilot would Honestly, use a joystick. Honestly, I've played around with the, the idea of kind of like redefining the HMI, the human machine interface mm -hmm. of flying a drone, almost kind of like a trigger like remote where maybe you would do you would do altitude with your thumb or even with your trigger here and then you'd have a, a, a joystick like 
you know, device here where you can yaw and then go forward, back, left, right. And I feel like that, I've played with it a little bit. We've, we took an Irish remote and put a three axis joystick here so you could go forward, back, left, right, and yaw on one stick. And that's kind of like how the Cineflex camera control gimbal right. works. And then you just do altitude here, right? It's very interesting. It is interesting. I think either way, it's just a matter of getting used to it. Like right now, it was easier for me because I'm used to the two sticks, right? It's still taking what you want the drone to do and then having to do some kind of complex maneuver with your hands to actually make it do that. Right. Right? And that's tough. Yeah. Right? You got the orientation deal, it's turning, it's doing whatever. Think about orientation would be no problem. You can rotate the drone and if you just look to the right, it went to the right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean God, how cool would that be, <laughs> that'd right? Be so, cool. so I don't know. All I'm saying is conceptually, we have to work to get closer and closer and closer to that reality. I like right? it. I like it and so. I like the idea of being safer with them too. Um, because it, it, there is user error that can happen, and we don't want these things crashing all over the place. That's right. And, and I know you've always been committed to that, so I love that. That's right. Um, the Iris Plus is like under $1,000. $750, 3DR.com. We're running a special right now for free shipping. Awesome. Hey, Oren, <laughs> are we running free shipping? <laughs> Subscriber to the YouTube channel? <laughs> Subscribe to the email list, and you can get free shipping on an Iris Plus right now. Awesome. So 750 bucks with free shipping, 3dr.com. <coughs> I'm choking. It's such a good price. That's why I'm still talking. You want to roll us I'll, to commercial? You can handle it. I'll just it. keep talking. All right, guys, be terrific stage. Thank you so much. Michael Arts is here, killing it all week at CES. Hashtag be terrific TV stage so that your photos <laughs> pop up on this deal right on the live stream. We're going to go out to commercial. When we come back, Michael's going to be here ready to talk to you guys.